Today we're at the historic Hamble and we're going to crack boat theft through the Internet of Things. This is our product, it's a covert GPS tracking device for bicycles um, and it's a seat post so it goes inside um, the bike uh, and inside it contains our electronics um, and the minute your bike moves and you're not there you'll see the position of the bike on a map in our mobile app. This is a much smaller packaging and much more suitable for waterproofing for applications such as deploying out on the water here. It fits neatly here into this small waterproof container and be deployed in different types of enclosures depending on the application. Here on the Solent what we're trying to do is create a unique network, something that's the first in certainly in Europe if not in the world, which is a multi-stack Internet of Things network. We'll be using both Sigfox and LoRa for the very first time in coexistence to see if we can crack all types of Internet of Things applications. We set the network up here on the Hamble this morning, but before we set the network up, the device's journey actually started back in Eastleigh. So what we have here is the tracker recording its own GPS location, even though it's out of range of the radio network. So this morning, we can see we started here in Eastleigh, picked up Mike and Elliot here at Southampton Airport, drove, I should say, along the M27-1 and not straight through the cricket ground. And here we are down in Burswoodon on the Hamble, where the network has then been built back up. We can see here a breadcrumb trail of every few minutes the device sending its precise GPS location from the pontoon to the boatyard to back here in the office. This box is all we need. Now if you follow the box, here is the aerial. It's going to go down to an antenna and down there is Gavin. Over to Gavin. There's a difference between mobile phone technology and low power networks. Low power networks are designed for very small signals and they're very power efficient. Uh, telephone uh, mobile signals are much broader, they have much higher data bandwidth, uh, but they use a lot more power, which is you, you recharge your phone every day, uh, whereas a low power device you'd want to last for 10, 20 years maybe on one battery. A more disturbing recent trend is a theft of boat motors here on the Solent. Some 300 every year at 15,000 pounds each disappear. Most of those and never recovered again. One of the things we found out earlier is for this GPS tracker to start working, it's got to start moving. Now here on the boat, as uh, you can probably see, we're moving all the time. So one of our key challenges is how do we wake this up so we don't use up all the battery power on it before we can start tracking. So because this device lives in a bicycle, the challenge of identifying when the bike is moving is pretty straightforward. We use an accelerometer. It's a tiny low power chip that just looks for, for motion in any direction. So, although we have this R thing one here available, it has environmental sensing such as temperature, humidity, and accelerometer so it knows when it's been moved and GPS to know where it is. There is lots of opportunities for other similar devices to be developed. They can all take advantage of the Things Network connectivity. So today we've found out that we can take an existing application such as bike tracking and change it for boat tracking. But something tells me that this bike tracker isn't quite ready for the marine environment yet. <laughs>